Welcome to the Nurse Mark Podcast, where we talk about everything health, happiness, cannabis. We'll delve into all aspects of what it means to live a powerful, healthy life. Everything from exercise to nutrition to mindfulness and how to use cannabis as a means to alleviate some of the most common health issues we face. My motivation and passion come from the fact that I personally had to explore all these areas to deal with lifelong depression and mood disorder. For me, it's personal. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey, folks, welcome to the Nurse Mark podcast. This week, my guest is Mike Zappelin. Mike, welcome to the Nurse Mark podcast. Mark, thank you. P- please call me Zappy. You know, there's so many mics out there that absolutely uh, going to call you Zappy because that is who you are, man. So yes. Zappy, I just want to do a little introduction so everybody knows who we're who we're talking to here, man. So you're a well known psychedelic advocate. You created a film called The Reality of Truth that's been seen by millions of viewers. And so you're into this whole thing about master healing plants, and you're an advocate for this. You even penned a January 2017 full page ad in the New York Times where you asked President Trump to make the opiate epidemic a first 100 days issue. And you provided scientific studies related to using low dose ketamine treatments for depression and Ibogaine to break heroin and meth addictions. Oh my gosh, man, this conversation we're going to have is going to be absolutely amazing. Yes. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I'm uh, I'm so honored to have you here, man. Like so honored, especially with those glasses. Like I'm looking at those glasses. I'm saying, how do I get a pair of those? Ha ha. We're going to make that possible for everybody for sure. I mean, no, I'm really, you know, as an, as a nurse, I really feel like I want to support nurses in everything that I do because generally those are the most compassionate people walking around on planet earth and they don't get all the, you know, glory that some other people get. And yet they, you know, do this, the hardest job, you know, people are like, Oh, being a parent's the hardest job or being a teacher. It's like, nah, being a nurse, that's a harder job. And so I just like really respect you guys and, and the opportunities. Mm. Yeah. And the opportunities for psychedelics to come out and be done in a really responsible way. So people have the best possible experience. They integrate properly. I believe is that they have that experience with a nurse who's had the direct experience themselves. That's the perfect way to introduce all of these, you know, healing compounds and these master healing plants and, and even, um, you know, compounds like, ketamine where yeah. this is a, a crystal that mm-hmm. we have this opportunity here in 2020 knowing what we do about science and medicine and health uh 50 years later we can actually use some of these compounds like ketamine like psilocybin mushrooms like ayahuasca ibogaine and all these things we can actually we have the ability now to tap into it so it's this is a golden age for health. It's amazing. Health. It's an amazing moment in time, especially for someone like me and, and the rest of the folks in the healthcare space, especially nurses. I think nurses recognize uh, or are more open to this type of healing than, say, the physicians traditionally are, because you know, physicians by training are very pharmaceutical based because those are the tools that they have and that they're trained on, right? So to yes. step into something new requires a lot of evidence and a lot of work. We have that evidence in the nursing community, I know, is, is far ahead in accepting these things as, as alternative medicines, really. Yes. Yeah. So your background so- was not in psychedelics, my man. When you were yeah. back in the day, you were like in, in you, I, you were a dot-com guru, right? That's what I, I saw out there. Yes, What's your background? Yes. Man? How'd you get where um, you are today? Ooh, sorry, I dropped my uh, phone there. It's been sliding <laughs> off a little bit, but let me Love it. let me fix that. We're live. This, this um, so Zappy is a road warrior, folks. Yes, he spends his time out there as an evangelist. Like he's not sitting at home waiting for this to happen. He's making it happen. 
So how did yes. you get here, man? How did you get from from being in on the internet, you know, in the early days of the internet to now where you're doing this? You know, I, I had my own spiritual midlife crisis, you know, where I looked at my life and I said, oh man, I just did everything that society told me I needed to do to be happy and fulfilled. And here I am and I'm, I'm having fun, and, but like, I'm not, I just don't feel fulfilled at the core. Mm. And I, I knew from psychedelic experiences that I'd had when I was younger, that if I went inside my own mind, that that was where I was going to find the answers to the questions that I was asking that I couldn't find outside of myself. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I decided, <clears throat> you know, that I would, you know, try to document what was going on with me and get my film crew together, people that I knew in that space and bring a film crew together and try to talk to some of the, you know, luminaries who I had relationships with, like Deepak Chopra and some other people that I had access to. I was like, wow, you know, like, this is so important that, you know, we kind of acknowledge that if you want to you know, get an answer, you're going to have to go inside and, and what, what advice could I get? And so I, I kind of convinced myself uh, back in 2012 that I needed to do an ayahuasca uh, ceremony and mm -hmm. drink ayahuasca because I, I, you know, had good experiences with psychedelics in the past, but I wasn't doing them with like a certain intent. Um, and right. This, it was a I recreational was, experience back then. And we've all had those, right? Same here. Yeah. So yep. now you're coming to this point where you really want to have sort of a, a more ceremonial experience, I guess, is the way I'd put it. It's a ceremony. It's like, you know, the yeah, shaman I mean, tradition. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to have the like a very experienced person do it. That's why the ceremony part. But I think more for me, it was like I wanted to do it the right intent. You know, mm -hmm. I was putting my intent on expand my consciousness, uh, trust nature you know, go inside for answers. Mm -hmm. Like those were, don't take anything serious. That was the things that I was like going into this with. And so I was like, wow, if I put my intent on this and then I have that experience, maybe I can expand my consciousness. And so when I did that, when I had that experience, I, I wound up bringing Michelle Rodriguez, the actress from Fast and Furious to come do ayahuasca and be part of the movie. Mm -hmm. And a group of other friends and we went down to the Peru in the jungle and at the top of a mountain, we drank some San Pedro, which is a cactus medicine. Mm -hmm. And then we hiked down into the rainforest and drank ayahuasca in the jungle. And it was a transformative experience for me, you know, it just like completely, you know, took all the filters off and mm -hmm. allowed me to mm -hmm. kind of you know, look at things for what they really were. And I, I came back, this is the story of how I got to where I am now. Uh, the movie came out and, you know, it's been seen by millions of people now and, and ayahuasca and San Pedro, these things have started to kind of come out now. And I was at the time though, I was saying to my friends, Oh my God, you got to go down and sit with the shaman in the jungle. Or if somebody was like, I have an addiction or I'm depressed. I'd say, Oh, go to the jungle. And they're like, Psh no way zappy like my parents they will put me in a mental institution you know they'll baker act me right now if i tell them i'm going to the jungle you know <laughs> drink some medicine are you nuts you know so i was yeah. like oh i gotta find a western medicine approach to this uh opportunity and i found ketamine you know the universe just brought it to my awareness and i was like mm -hmm. wow you know this could be the Western medicine approach where it's FDA approved. It's completely safe. They use it on, you know, infants for oral surgery and things like that. It's, yep, it's totally yep. safe. So maybe this is the way. And I wound up having uh, the ketamine experience and um, it was really like the best of an ayahuasca experience or plant medicine experience where you didn't have the whole purging and, you know, you didn't have to heavy integration afterwards. Right. It's just like the beautiful middle of that. And, you know, that was incredible to me because, you know, a plant has a lot of legacy where it was grown and who harvested it and who brewed it. And, and there's a lot, how there's it a lot to it in ayahuasca, you know, you have to have a specific diet beforehand. You got to be careful of what you eat. And, and you're right. There's yes. an integration afterwards. It's a period of time, what a day or two, right? At least, I mean, it could definitely be a couple ways, days, but could be weeks, you know, that mm -hmm. you're 
like integrating that experience where here the ketamine, it was just so, you know, clean and it was such an opportunity to, um, you know, just, uh, you know, drop those filters. Cause you know, what I was seeing was that like, you know, we are all have these filters, you know, what we put up and it's basically, it's okay. We're doing it for the right reason. It's, you know, right now I'm talking to you and sound waves are coming out of my mouth and mm -hmm. you just kind of filter those out as not necessary. You know, somebody blows a dog whistle and I hear it, but I filter it out as not necessary. And mm -hmm. so we're constantly filtering and screening and everything. And so when you take those filters off, <clears throat> now you're in this like present moment awareness. And I realized that, you know, getting into that present moment awareness is like the whole point of life. And that right. you know, a lot of people never get there because they've got so much chatter going on in their mind, so much anxiety and everything. And, you know, to be in that present moment. And when I realized that the ketamine puts you into that pre present moment awareness, and that this was gonna, you know, it's a suicide interrupter, you know, we've got an addiction disruptor as well in it. We've got a depression. It's been, you know, Cleveland Clinic called it a that, top that, 10 medical breakthrough. I mean, this that, is that's one of the things that I think is really cool is that now it's being used a lot to treat depression. Like it's part of the protocol. Yeah. There are there are a lot of clinics that are opening up that are doing, you know, ketamine IV infusions and they just you know, they have this experience for people with, with depression that isn't being treated with anything else, right? None yeah. of the other medications work and these people are suffering for a long time. I, I had, yeah. I mean, I had treatment resistant depression my whole life. And so it took wow. me, took me a, a different set of experiences to get to where I'm medication free for five years. But part of that exciting part is psychedelics and, and ketamine specifically can, I guess it's like a hack, right? You could spend yeah. 30 years in treatment and maybe get a little bit of relief. Ketamine could, in a short amount of time, relieve it completely. Like that's the yeah. experience that people are having. That's, it's amazing. That's amazing. the beauty of it. Yeah, yeah. And, the, you know, Mark, the science on it is incredible. The latest science is that you have this default mode network area of your brain. Mm -hmm. And in there, there's a mechanism called your lateral habenula. And that lateral habenula is recording all the stress that you've ever had in your whole life. When it gets to be too much, it goes into burst mode, which is a different brain state. And it basically tells your brain to uh, stop producing dopamine. And dopamine is like your happiness and your motivation to do Dopamine's things. Dopamine's so everything. Dopamine yeah. is the key. Yeah. So yeah. if you're cut off, you're going to be depressed. And you're not going to have any motivation. So <clears throat> the ketamine, the first time you do it, it takes the brain out of burst mode. You immediately start getting dopamine. So this is like revolutionary. This is why a lot of people who have even treatment resistant depression, nothing's worked. Uh, all of a sudden they do their first ketamine treatment. And then the next day, you know, we get a call from, uh, you know, their spouse and, and they're like, oh my God, the guy just cleaned out the garage. He's been talking about that for five years or... <laughs> He just exercised. Like, what yeah. the hell is going on? You know, now, if you've never been depressed. You don't know how hard it is to get yourself motivated to do either of those things you just mentioned. Like going to the yeah. gym and working out when you're in a depressed state. You might as well be saying, "Go climb Mount Kilimanjaro or right. you know Everest." It's just yeah. it's that hard to get there. Wow. So that's huge. Yeah, so that's huge. And then, uh, you know, the science on the ketamine is that, you know, this is a dissociative. So it's not a hallucinogenic, like the walls aren't melting and everything. Mm -hmm. But what's happening is your left and your bright brain are dissociating and they're able to communicate freely without your ego getting involved. And when that happens, you know, you could live a thousand lifetimes right there, but you're allowing your brain to make new neural pathways. And when the ketamine metabolizes, it turns into this hydroxy norketamine, and mm -hmm. it's actually shown to be building new neural pathways in the brain. It's that, so every it's time that idea of it, neuroplasticity. Yeah, this yeah. is that. And, you know, the other things like antidepressants, they're just suppressing things in the brain and you have to keep them in your system 24 hours a day and they build up and they're hard to come off and the side effects where the ketamine, it's out of your system within a couple hours, it's gone. Right. And, you know, 
that's amazing that you don't have to take this thing all the time. So as you know, Mark, we have started something called KetaMD, which is to mm -hmm. help people do ketamine treatments at their own home. And we have doctors that they speak with, and then we send them their ketamine lozenge. And then they talk to a nurse who guides them through that, you know, roughly one hour uh, treatment. And it's a really beautiful, uh, you know, thing for them. But you just know that even the next day, as those neural pathways are building, you know, that you're going to get the call where the person's like, wow, that was really incredible. It was like mm -hmm. nothing else I've ever, <clears throat> you know, experienced. And I think it's helping me. And I want to, you know, continue to try to build that up because, you know, everybody has patterns in their brain that are either maybe heredity or from so some many trauma. Factors. Yeah. So you many know, factors. You, but once it gets wired in that way, we're going to, we're going to utilize those pathways and act in those ways over and over and over again until you can rewire it. And rewiring the brain is not an easy proposition unless you have tools like this, really. Yes. Yeah. yeah. These are, these are the tools, you know, like, um, I'm sure you've seen maybe that movie, Fantastic Fungi. Oh, yeah. um, it's, it's amazing. And you can see that these, you know, psilocybin when, you know, it, it's like a neural network and it's even mm -hmm. throughout your whole body, you're creating these new helpful networks to you. And I think with ketamine, you know, being that it turns 80% of your brain on, meaning this is, actually the the limitless drug that they make all the movies about and stuff that they're like oh imagine if you could use 80 percent of your brain wouldn't that be incredible and it's like yes that's ketamine hello here's the science um and you and know, there is a lot of science that's the thing yes this has been this drug is schedule three it's been used for years and years and years it's used regularly as you said as a as a um um Oh, what am I trying to say? As a anesthetic. Thank you, anesthetic. Yeah. So it's used all the time, very safely, and and there is a lot of evidence out there, a lot of studies that have been done about the efficacy as a tool in the mental health space. So yeah, yeah. so Keta MD yeah. is this amazing new organization that you are just you know straight out making it happen. And it's amazing. Yeah, well, this is, you know, this is out of, you know, um, pure, you know, needing to make this happen. And I say that because, you know, we're coming out of this coronavirus, the PTSD is going to be needs off, it. it's already off the charts, people need to be triaged for sure. And uh, my business partner, Warren Gumpel and I, you know, we also have a movie coming out with Lamar Odom, where we made a documentary about uh, a alternative treatment we gave to Lamar where we use ketamine treatments mm -hmm. and we use ibogaine uh, to basically, you know, in the, in the film, there's a formula. It says ketamine plus plant medicine, plus a daily practice like mm -hmm. meditation, breathing equals a conscious transformation. Right. Right. And, and so we put him through that and, and he had an incredible experience. He'd never gone inside his own mind. Most people, you know, they know he's a championship LA Laker and he was married mm -hmm. to a Kardashian, but they don't realize that he had a lot of trauma in his life. And, yeah. it's, you know, it's, yeah. once you realize that you're like, wow, you know what, you know, his mom passed away when he was 12 years of age of cancer in front oh. of him and his grandmother who raised him passed away. He had a six month old son who passed away while he was playing basketball. And trauma. it's like, trauma man heavy heavy trauma and yeah. um you know there's no other way out of that and he you know he tried everything else and um you know he trusted me to do the ketamine treatments with me and warren mm -hmm. and uh you know he had he just the first time he did it he came out and he said i've never felt this good in my life right and i was like wow what that's a the, great statement that, yes elders are that, gone man i was like was the camera Ooh. on? <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, oh, you got to hope but, it was uh, rolling then. You got to hope it was yeah. rolling. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk but, about, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, I'm excited for the movie to come out soon and be streaming in the next yeah. you know, few months because I think people seeing a celebrity, we're living in a celebrity driven culture. So to see somebody like Lamar, who people feel like they know and they followed and stuff, to see his transformation in film, kind of like Michelle Rodriguez in the reality of truth, mm -hmm. you know, she's 
you just see her, you know, transformation through plant medicine where she just like became more aware of herself and she was in present moment awareness. And, yeah. you know, she says in that movie that, you know, drinking the medicine there was a destruction of everything she ever known and that everything that she knew could possibly be bullshit. And it made her happy because she was like, had a new total uh, new outlook on life. Anything's possible when everything else is gone. Yeah. It's, that's the, that's the that's point. That's what it is. Yeah. So, so let's talk about meditation as the component that you're talking about too, because meditation for thousands of years has been the way that people have gone inside. Now yeah. it's still through the, it's, it's hard work because you're going through the filters that are still in place. Yeah. And so I, I think maybe that's where these ritualistic uses of uh, plant psychedelics came into play, right? To give that access yeah. into a deeper space. You know, the shamanic tradition was they do, they go through these processes that break them down and get rid of all of who they were and it's right. rigorous work only so yeah. that they can be reborn into this new, new uh, awareness, right? All these yes. traditions have been yes. going on forever and ever. And now we're adding in, as you're talking about ketamine, but you're doing it with a meditation, right? Sort of yes, a absolutely. State. Talk, let's talk so, about You know, I, the, the goal of the two things are the exact same. You know, when you're same. doing a, yeah, when you're doing a master healing plant or you're doing meditation, the idea is to get into present moment awareness mm -hmm. and to stay there as long as you can, transcend mm -hmm. it. Uh, beyond the physical, you know, able to draw, you know, from that universal consciousness and ideas and visions and healing and all these things. It's the same thing. So, you know, I, I was really lucky. Somebody taught me meditation uh, 30 years ago or so, a, a mantra based meditation. And I've been doing that since. But, you know, even there, until I really, you know, had some of these experiences with. Uh, master healing plants and ketamine. Uh, now I feel like I have these pathways within my meditation so that now I can just start close my eyes. I don't have to go, you know, on the mantra for at all, really, I can just close my eyes and just see the path and start to transcend. And I don't, I didn't really have those in the same way prior to doing uh, those catalysts. Mm -hmm. And I think they go hand in hand, just like you said, meditation has been around for thousands of years. So have these plant medicines. These things have been around, you know, tens of thousands, millions of years. People have been interacting with plants and mm -hmm. sitting in nature and stuff. So I, I think these things have been intertwined. I think, you know, we have a, a society right now where we're, you know, this is the hubris of human beings where we think, oh, we'll just solve it all with technology. Nature doesn't know anything. We'll just like throw some computers at it, you know? And, yeah. and that's, that's the problem. So people, you know, it's really hard to tell somebody after they just came back from war or some trauma or they were abused or something and say, oh, just sit down over there and meditate and, you know, you'll just transcend away, you know? It's like, no, that's impossible almost. But if they have some catalyst that like smashes them through it and breaks then that wall. Yeah. Yeah. And then they can peacefully, they know what present moment awareness is about. And then they can fall back into that place that they were that present moment awareness where there's no, you know, in ketamine, you know, thank God it's here because this is the easiest. It's the fastest. It's all the chatter stops. You have clear mind and you're very, you know, no anxiety, no, no, you know, having, disruption, you know, ha having had the ketamine experience, I can tell you that it is, it is markedly different than a psilocybin or an LSD experience. I mean, they're just, each one of them is really different. I haven't had an yeah. ayahuasca experience or San Pedro, um, definitely on my, on my list, but ketamine by far is just the most smooth, easy. Um, and, and I, I don't know. I don't want to say non-invasive. I just want to say it's, it's very smooth and easy. Yeah. It's very approachable. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's what I love about it is, um, you know, you don't have to, 
there, you know, with plant medicine, again, these master healing plants, there's these mm -hmm. spirit energies of ayahuasca, the mother, you know, San Pedro is like the father, and this ibogaine is like the angry grandfather, and they have these spirits to them. And I think the ketamine, it's like, you're, there's no spirits with this. You're just going inside yourself mm -hmm. and you're in present moment awareness mm -hmm. and you don't have to have all of that, you know, sort of chaos that happens between the plant matter that your body wants out and, you know, the legacy aspects of all that has to do with plants. So this is just a, it's a real godsend. I mean, you know, I think nature's very intelligent and, is bringing out these plants knowing that people are disrupted and diseases and things so cannabis has been coming out and paving the way and mm -hmm. ayahuasca and psilocybin and now you know ketamine even because again people think it's yeah. synthetic but i would argue that it's really a crystal you know they put some crystals and minerals together in this crystal you know ketamine forms and um to me that just means it's clean and it's predictable and you could even put good energy on a crystal so it really is that's right a beautiful vehicle for society to yeah. use right now amazing amazing and i'll tell you it really is a worldwide phenomenon right now this interest in psychedelics and consciousness expansion i'm a member of entrepreneurs organization and it's the it's the largest and most influential peer network of entrepreneurs in the world and we have a WhatsApp group that's specifically psychedelics. So I have friends wow. in South Africa. I have friends in wow. Netherlands. I have them around the world. And the conversation is about our experiences in, in psychedelics and consciousness expansion. And it's just, wow. it, it is the most amazing conversation. And here we are having this conversation too. So yes. how was I yeah. drawn to that? And then we met. I mean, how this is, things, right? This yeah, I mean, look, this is in the zeitgeist of the times right now where, you know, people have PTSD and, and the other things aren't working and they're really mm -hmm. seeking and people are seeking answers. And so, you know, this brings me to why, you know, what I'm most passionate about, which is the Mind Army. And this is a social movement that I started with some friends. And the Mind Army is fighting for the right to pursue happiness. And we believe that everybody has the human inalienable right to go inside their own mind for answers and for healing. And that in, the, in this crisis moment that mm -hmm. we are asking the government, the, the, the president of the United States, the executive branch to make these psychedelic compounds legal for the crisis that people have right now with depression and addiction and suicidal ideation it there's no way that we're going to be able to treat it with the limited amount of resources that we have in traditional mental health yeah. we're just not there Can't are not done. enough clinicians every clinician that i know they're not taking patients zappy they're full they can't do another round right yeah so how do yeah. all of these other millions of people that are having these problems how do they address it yeah this is it yes this is it man you know, and, and you know, uh, uh, some stats I heard that are super scary are like eight, uh, the suicide hotline in uh, Los Angeles, the calls are up 8,000% mm -hmm. last, over last year. Yeah. Uh, CD, CDC said that one in four teens is contemplated suicide during coronavirus. I mean, you're talking yeah. about, that's, that's the scariest number I've ever heard. And to me, it's like, if we want to avoid having some you know, mass suicide situation online with teens and things. We have to yeah. be very aggressive. We cannot we just sit around and go, you know, oh, well, cannabis took a long time. So no. psychedelics are going to take a long time. No, this is we an don't have that luxury situation. Pandemic yeah. Moment. yeah. Yeah. It's a pandemic. So moment. We are, I, mean, I, I don't know about you, but I've had several people in my circle of friends have family members that committed suicide. My son is at a yeah. funeral today in Maryland for a Marine Corps buddy of his, 27 years old, just killed himself the other day. You know, man, yeah. I mean, this is, yep. and that, Not, that, and there that, that ketamine. Itself, in the military, yeah. the, you know, 22 military veterans a day kill themselves still yeah. in this country because of the direct result of mental health issues from being put in the situation they're put in. Yep. And yep. we could help them with ketamine, man. I know it. Yeah. That guy, you know, that guy uh, probably would be here if he had had ketamine, you know, yeah. because could have been. And it, it, 
and you know who knows psilocybin mushrooming yep. for uh for veterans you know to be microdosing that and having just this beautiful you know experience of being connected in nature and that you know things are okay when you're doing that yeah. and i think these are going to replace you know the antidepressants and things but we have to be very aggressive that's what i wanted to you know say on the show is you know please you know if you're watching this join the mind army uh sign our petition yeah mindarmy.org uh, folks mindarmy.org and we'll have it up on the show notes too zappy cool sure. yeah, yeah this is like we can't we're i'm not going to sit around in 2020 and you know these were made illegal back in the 1960s they said we need to study these to make sure they're safe so we're making them illegal and I was, I, you know that makes sense okay so then they studied it and so now here we are 53 years later with and we're positive, in this crisis. positive yeah. evidence millions of people have taken and many with life transforming effect and I'm not going to sit here and have somebody tell me that alcohol is good, tobacco's good, but psilocybin mushrooms, not good, and it's off limits. No, not we're accepting not gonna take that. It. No, we're not going to yeah. accept it anymore. Yeah. It's not, it's not rational thought. It's just not rational thought, and we're not going to take it anymore. And yeah. I just, you know and what, Zap? I just read a study, I think earlier this week, I just read a study where there, uh, where there were people that took one a uh, dose of psilocybin mushroom had one experience and these were people with depression. They studied them and they had a five year positive effect of a decrease in depression from one single psilocybin yeah. experience. Yeah, of course. Dude, it's of amazing. Course. It's amazing. This is, yeah, this is the beauty of what we have. We just, you know, we're in the education phase. You know, the reason I mm -hmm. took out that full page ad in the New York times to, asked Donald Trump about making the opiate epidemic a first hundred day issue. And I described to him the evidence with ibogaine and ketamine is that like, it's not like there's some conspiracy to hold this back. Really, there isn't. It's just like people don't know. They literally don't know. And so, you know, I see the same thing in nutrition. It's like, you know, most doctors in their med school, they might spend a week or two or something talking about, you know, nutrition, but mm -hmm. like that's 95% of your health if you do it right. So Absolutely. What's going on here. <laughs> so true. So true. So, really? Yeah. We have to educate them. That's our job. And, you know, yeah. that's what the movie, the Lamar movie is about. And the Why reality truth, today. it's like, we're mm -hmm. in a celebrity driven culture. Let's, you know, Let's give people celebrity to understand what these things are and get educated. And then, you know, they can be open to having the experience because we need everybody to be good with it. Because like right now, even let's say cannabis, it's legal in a lot of places and it's medically legal. But even as those patients are using it, there's all these people around them going, oh, that's drugs. Oh, you're doing it too much, blah, blah, blah. Not realizing that this is a medicine, you know, that this is helping the person. They, you shouldn't want that person on antidepressants, drinking alcohol, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. That's you because know, they, they, put, they put so much stock in, you know, traditional uh, medical knowledge and uh, experience. And to be fair, there is a lot of knowledge and experience that's very, very good. But you're right. There's a lot of new evidence and new experiences that can be far more effective. And that's what we've been talking about right here. Yep. This yeah. is it. We're going, yeah. we're going straight to the top. That's just, it's the same thing with um with the with the mind army's approach, meaning like mm. we don't want to talk to the state and the county and the city and the the fda and the dea like we're past that we're in a crisis moment we're trying to we're in a crisis moment and none of those suicides. people can get it done they can't yeah. get it done the only person can get it done is donald trump right now and yep. we're going to him and we're appealing to him saying you will win the nobel prize because you will bring suicide rates down by 75 percent using ketamine and yep. these other plants mm -hmm. and uh, you're going to make a dent in the real mental health battle and the addiction Absolutely. battle and safely. with ibogaine. Wow. Safely. You know, safely. Yeah. That is yep. the truth. Safely yeah. be able to do that. Now, yes. you know, you can't say that for a lot of the psychotropic medications that people are on today. They're not safe. Like there are a yeah. lot of horrendous side effects associated with, yes. with taking those medications. So here we have a safe alternative. 
man, I'm all yes. in for making this we thing. You just got to tell him about it. And you know, uh, jo Joe case? Biden. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Biden's son, uh, Hunter Biden, he had a drug and alcohol issue. Uh, yeah. He overcame it using Ibogaine that Lamar used in the movie and stuff. So it's like we intend to go to Joe Biden and say to him, you know, if it's good enough for your son, it's good enough for everybody else. Like, let's go. Like, this is not, you know, this it's just doesn't education need to be just for the, you know, yeah. Yeah. The wealthy yeah. who have access to it either. This has to be democratized, you know, mm -hmm. psychedelics need to be democratized, even racially speaking. You know, there's a lot of, you know, we talk about this in the Lamar uh, as, as he, you know, alludes to that, you know, he never, he'd always been told don't use psychedelics because if you have a bad experience and you freak out, like you could get shot, you could be put in a mental institution, but if, as, you know, a yeah. white kid in the suburbs had as a freak a black out. man, that can happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the white kid would be, you know, sent to therapy and the whole community would be like, oh, we're behind you, you know, so Completely we got to really experience. create, yeah, you like safe zones where people mm -hmm. of all races, nationalities, religions can come. It's no, no judgment. You're just like a human energy. And then you get the catalyst. You synthesize that catalyst energy into yours in a safe place with the right setting and people mm -hmm. around you there to, you know, protect you. It's everybody deserves this everybody deserves it man bravo i couldn't agree more so you got mindarmy.org making it making it right to the top and you yep. have keta md which is going to be this this new thing um what's your plan when are you gonna when are you gonna yeah. be to market when's things gonna well we yeah, we're expecting to be to market it uh, around Halloween and we want we want this out, you know, we feel like our job is to make this as cost effective and as accessible as possible because right now, you know, ketamine treatments that are done in clinics and stuff in Beverly Hills in New York and stuff. It's really expensive. It can be, you know, several hundred dollars per treatment and you're doing five treatments, thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. We want this to be cost effective to the point where, you know, for a couple hundred dollars and do it at your own home. You don't have to take time off from work and go to an office and all that kind of stuff. Yep. We want to make this accessible, but we also want to educate millennials right now and say to them that before you go down the path of years of antidepressants and all the side effects and talk therapy and stuff, first do the ketamine and see if that helps rather than doing everything else and then doing ketamine, which was, has been what it's been, you know, up until this point. So we want to educate the doctors. We want to educate the parents. We want to educate the millennials and say, this is an opportunity for a young person to take mm -hmm. a first step to really, you know, do it in a cost effective way, be with a nurse over telemedicine. I mean, you know, just the, the set and setting of, having these experiences is really important. So when you're sitting with somebody, even over telemed, there's a very strong psychic connection beyond just the, you know, zeros and ones coming through the phone. There's an actual psychic connection between you and that person. Mm -hmm. And you get the benefit of that person being there to help you being there emotionally and, you know, to have a nurse do it and watch over you. It's like, that's the perfect set and setting for the coronavirus time and yeah. uh, so it's it's really cool i also want to tell you as you know personally uh we are doing something at keta md called a ketitation and the ketitation is the amazing. ketamine enhanced meditation yes. amazing having experienced that i will tell you firsthand it is a transformative experience in ah Yes. And the group effect, you know, what I love about it is that the, you know, we have our people doing these ketamine treatments at home, but to be able to in your city to be able to go once a week or once a month and go be with a group socially distanced, lay on a yoga mat and have that group effect where everyone takes the ketamine at the same time. They've been cleared by doctors. The energy. Everybody has, yeah, it's collective consciousness and it's really powerful. And to be able to use ESP and to be able to have a collective vision of the group, uh, we can't wait because we think our patients and people are going to be excited to, you know, like Warren Gump Pell says, like, instead of going to happy hour on a Friday night, you might go 
do a meditation, be with, you know, 20 people who are doing a meditation and talk about it after and eat good food and just expand your consciousness. Brother, like, that's happy hours great. are out. Happy hours are out. <laughs> I was having this conversation with my wife. We're talking about how, you know, we decided we're just going to limit alcohol. We're just not going to, it's not going to be a part of our lives. And we have a lot of friends and a lot of people we know that are kind of in the same place, right? They're saying, this drug just doesn't do much for me anymore. You know what? It's kind of like a negative thing. So I'm just going to yeah. put this to the side, you know, limit it. I'm not saying ever and ever, but just limit it, right? So it makes mm -hmm. sense to me that if we could have like a monthly mm -hmm. social experience like that, unbelievable and yeah. healthy for your mind, expanding your consciousness, being with other people who are like-minded in that energy in that room. Talk about healing the world, man. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. amazing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we're talking about, you know, ultimately we'd like to do a million person meditation at some point, but you know, the beautiful, <laughs> Let's do the it. beautiful, the beautiful part is, you know, Timothy Leary, um, had he uh, the 60s icon of oh, yeah. psychedelics and a brilliant doctor he had a, a model for the brain uh four areas of the brain on your left which is your survival brain like your fight or flight mm -hmm. and then you have f four on the right side which is your evolutionary brain where you're evolving and having experiences and art and mm -hmm. all these cool things you know and music and it's all happening over here so he said that you can affect these different areas of the brain with different energies different substances and so the fourth one over here on the left side you can affect it with alcohol he said and it just accelerates the you know lizard brain fear and everything ex exacerbates it and then he said yes. on, on the right hand side the fifth one you can affect that with uh marijuana the sixth one with psilocybin mushrooms the seventh one with ayahuasca high dose of ayahuasca and lsd high dose LSD. And then he said the eighth area of the brain, the one that unlocks your supercomputer, the one that lets all your brain at, be active, you unlock that using ketamine. So sign like, me up, wow. baby. Sign yeah. me up. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm all and, about you know, that. The, the, and the, PT, the PTSD that people have right now, it, it's really serious. It's not like we're not, you know, just saying you know let's recreationally fill a stadium and you know everybody trip out and like we'll put some music on it's like no this is a this is ptsd this mm -hmm. is the way that you build new neural pathways and if you can do that in a good set and setting that's the ultimate on how to get rid of ptsd there's nothing else it's, that's going to work like and, that and it is it is it is an epidemic proportion uh, uh event for sure I mean, PTSD mm -hmm. is, if, if you've had a traumatic event in your life, you're probably suffering from some post-traumatic stress, right? Whether it becomes a disorder yeah. or not, you're still suffering from that and it's still in your brain. And man, we could talk about that for hours on, on end. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. suffice to say, holy cow, we have an opportunity yeah. here to make it happen. Yeah. So Zappy, how do we Got make it. it happen? How do we support this? How do we get on yes. board? So here's the key. All right. Um, definitely. You're going to want to be part of the mind army because that, I think we just all have the responsibility to say, you know what? Enough is enough. Like this is an actual very scary situation of mental health that we're in and we need all hands on deck, whatever somebody wants to do. It's their body. It's their right. You know, you can't keep, tell somebody they can't go inside their own mind. So it's important that we speak up for this right now. I think, mm -hmm. um, and um, and then beyond that, uh, if you know somebody or you need that you have PTSD or you have anxiety, and uh, you know definitely you're going to be able to tap into Keta MD and get some relief there and be with like an amazing nurse to guide you through that experience. So yeah, that's absolutely. important because you know having the experience and talking about it. You know, like the Maharishi taught the Beatles to meditate. They he always said, you know. You can talk about the strawberry all day, or you can take a bite of the strawberry and then talk about it. It's going to be a totally different discussion. Yes. And I believe that. And uh, I think direct experience is important. And then uh, the secondly, I love what the Maharishi said, my favorite quote, I tell it to people, you know, when, when I'm guiding somebody or they're going to do a 
the, you know, a treatment or, you know, a plant medicine, I'll say, um, you know, the two things I would say is just, you know, have your intent be to expand your consciousness, you know, don't go for answers and things, just expand your consciousness. It can only go the right way. And then listen to remember what the Maharishi said, we have the serious responsibility to take nothing serious. <laughs> so yeah, when you're in there, just yeah. you know, watch it like a movie. It's a beautiful thing. And when, then, when you come back out of that experience or your meditation at that point, you come back out and you're like, wow, you know what? I'm really in a miracle. I mean, th we are living in a miracle. And I think that like my kind of closing thought to you is just to like, you know, think about like what a miracle it is that the sun is like 93 million miles away. Perfect for us to have an atmosphere, perfect. breathe air. Um, I'm talking on a phone in real time on video to somebody in China. I mean, this is like miracle type stuff. Absolutely. But people, they're like jaded, you know, they're like, where's the miracle? There's no bush burning over there. And it's like, well, how do you get back to that appreciation of the miracle? And every time I go into one of those experiences, you know, ketamine, ayahuasca, any of these psilocybin, that's like when I go in and I come out and I go, I look around and I'm like, wow, what a miracle. And so I think yeah. that's what the ketamine is. It reconnects you to what an amazing miracle every breath and every day and is. It, and it's it just, is, man. It is. It's yeah. a blessing and a miracle. And it's been a blessing and a miracle for us to have this conversation, Zappy. Yes. I'm so appreciative that you took the time to be on the Nurse Mark podcast and to talk about this absolutely amazing moment in time and what you're up to now. So I'm going to have yes. all of your info on the show notes. We'll do all the promos. We'll definitely have it out there. And cool. so and, and, and any, any nurses, yep. And any nurses that you know, want to be part of this, I would say they should reach out to you. And, Absolutely. Uh, That's and right. I know you're, you're supporting putting the nurses network together. So, I am. you know, reach yeah, out. So to any you nurses that are interested out. in working with Keta MD, get a hold of me. I'm, you, you know, my contact info there, it'll be on the show notes nice. too. So reach out and it's, it's, we're going to change rewarding. the world. We're going to, yeah. we're going to heal the world. Zappy. All right. Thank you, Thanks, nurses. Man. Thanks, Mark. All right. All right. Enjoy. All right. Enjoy and the miracle. Yeah. Enjoy the miracle. All right, folks. That was a great, great chat with Zappy. We learned a lot, didn't we? We learned a lot about psychedelics and what's up and happening in the space now. And I'm super excited about Keta MD and the opportunities that are going to present itself to heal people with this amazing chemical with this amazing crystal and there are so many other things that are going to be coming online so thanks for listening into the nurse mark podcast and hey we'll see you next time